Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video of uh, the Cinematography Lab, which originally is going to be about filmmaking and filming and shooting with film cameras and digital cameras and lighting and all those things. But um, I wanted to make these short videos and today I'm going to remove the loop formers of this camera. This is a Krasnogorsk K3. And this camera, as you can see, it is in beautiful condition. And it came from Russia, direct, directly from Russia. Um, it is in beautiful condition, but it doesn't work. So I'm gonna use it, it's pretty much a virgin camera. It's all the way winded up, uh, and if I push the trigger, nothing happens. But um, I'm gonna try to fix it later. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Virgin camera. And it is so Virgin that it actually comes with a couple of uh, spools. And it actually comes with film. And as you can see, you can uh, have an idea of how old this film is. Because um, this is double perforated film. It has sprocket holes on the two ends of the film. So it's been there for a long time. And it's actually in there I'm gonna save this for uh, to test cameras um, I have a Bolex double 8 and that, that camera can use that one so this is a K3 guys uh, one of the problems one of the downsides of the camera are the um, loop formers and the, the loop formers are these are watching this video probably it is because you have one so when you load the camera, the, the loop formers are a, we could say, an automatic way to load the camera. You just point the, the film here. And since I have this thing here, then you just insert it here and you click the, you push the trigger. And the, the film is going to go through the loop system and it's gonna get the camera loaded the problem with the loop uh, formers and the reason for a lot of people to remove them is the the mechanism is not exactly the best because there are loop formers on Kenoscopix, there are loop formers on the Bolex pretty much all the Bolex have a the loop formers and they were great nobody's uh, removing them on those cameras but the problem with this camera is they are made out of plastic and the mechanism doesn't work great. So people, for that reason, um, many times it's, it's, it is very common that the cameras are going to scratch the film. And what is scratching the film is are these two plastic parts because they are not exactly moving away the way you should do it. And you are going to see the mechanism, and you're going to see it's kind of simple, um, yet not really effective, because it's it's not a... Well, it is a mechanical one. You're, you're going to see. So basically, pretty much, when you put the lid on the cap of the magazine, you can see it is uh, not going all the way down, and then you have to apply some pressure. You see that? And probably you can hear that sound well pretty much what is going on is uh when you push this thing down which is what the the cap is doing actually the loop formers open up cleaning the the way for the film and when they work uh it's pretty simple right they get out of the way of the film uh the film it's always doing this uh, intermittent movement so it's always like that it's never perfect like running perfectly it, it's always like shaking and if they touch if it touches the thing it's gonna damage it so let's go let's do it uh, firstly I'm going to remove this part right here and the way to do it is just it's a plastic insert use apply some pressure and it's gonna come off so this thing don't lose it if you don't have this part 
your, your camera is not gonna work it's gonna get stuck and it doesn't run properly if you don't have one I 3d printed one and it's uh, get the, gets the job done and it works pretty much the same as the original then I'm going to remove this thing if you have one of these cameras probably you're familiar with this thing this is the the pressure plate and this is the part that it's in charge of keeping the the film flat against the the actual gate I have another gate here from another camera from from another K3 and you can see that this thing goes in there fits perfectly and what it does is it keeps the the film flat against the film the the gate while it is running through the camera so there are a few screws uh, most of the time when I do this uh, job I remove this thing I don't I don't think it's something you need this is a film cutter so you put film there and obvious <laughs> pretty obvious right it's gonna splice film is gonna cut it so you can uh, get it ready when you're going to use the camera in my opinion it's not something I need to do um, so if you want to put it back, that's up to you. Um, and then, then there are, I mean, you have to remove this thing because we're going to lift this part. And there are some, some screws, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have to remove all those six screws and take it from there. I, I have some basic stuff here that I'm going to use. You don't need special tools, so I'm going to use uh, some good quality screwdrivers, especially these ones. That's a, it's a good idea. You don't want to damage the, the screws. And then scissors and knives. But I forgot something, and it is a good idea to, to do this, even when I don't do it all the time, and it's not a big deal, but there are a couple of screws here and you have to unscrew it from the side i'm gonna do it soon right uh actually as a matter of fact you can see one there so we have to remove those but in order to put them back in the position they are originally are it's a good idea to mark this thing you can scratch it if you want you can use a uh, nail polisher you want you can use a marker just so you put when you put it back you want to put these aligned in the same position where it was with relationship to the to the shaft okay so i have a sharpie now and it's a silver one so it's gonna work even better and what, I'm, what i'm going to do is just mark this thing something like that doesn't matter really it's just uh so you can put the piece that part on the on its original position when you finish and then okay let's start um, try to use them um, as I said before try to use a good quality screwdriver and use the tape if you have one or you can or if you have several ones use the one that fits the screws the better so you don't damage them I'm sorry guys but I'm I'm working on a tight space and then I have a camera with a big tripod next to me so it's not exactly easy doing this kind of stuff. Okay, so you're going to have this separator and then you have the the actual cutter and a couple of screws. Put them somewhere where you can remember where they go. Uh as I said before, when I most of the time with my cameras, when I put them back, I just use uh, I have some black silicon, and then I I just cover those holes with that thing and forget about that thing. I don't use it. So next thing is gonna be removing one, two, three, four, five, six screws.
okay so at this point uh i'm pretty much ready to lift this thing happily with this camera because i already mentioned that i cannot um trigger the camera it doesn't work i have to fix that later they have a good idea what of what the problem is but basically what you have to do is i i got extremely lucky with this one because you have a couple of uh, screws here inside that barrel and you have to align them exactly the way they are right now so you can put a screwdriver here like that and reach that one and a screwdriver here like that and remove those you don't have to remove them all the way all the way out they are just uh keeping that part in place really that's all they are doing so i have to change the tip of my screwdriver because those uh screws are smaller be careful they are at an, at an angle and it's not exactly exactly comfortable working on those but not a big deal there it is there's the first one actually you could and as soon as it uh, it is not touching the the shaft the it's gonna be free okay so there goes the second one you can see them pretty clearly there and uh, that's basically what you want to do you want to align them this part like that and that's the why you mark this thing because it has a the shaft uh, has a part where the screws attach to that thing uh, and you want to you want to put it in, in the same place is a good idea but I, I know from experience that it it simply works doesn't really matter where what those things are and I'm sorry about the the position of the camera guys <laughs> but again uh, I have a big camera and a big tripod next to me and I'm trying to work here at the same time uh, but let's do it okay so we removed all those screws from the the big ones uh, we already removed the the pressure plate and the part that was here so uh, this thing as well and when this thing is free what you want to do is you want to grab these things and there are there are some videos online and I appreciate those because uh, I learned how to do this kind of stuff based on those videos so you can watch those uh, so you can get more a clear idea of what we're doing here there is no video specifically talking about removing the loop formers and this is that's what it is but i have to open the camera in any ways so i'm explaining the process and this thing you have to it, it may not be that complicated do you hear that that was the the motor it was uh widened up winded up and um as soon as I lifted this part, it got free and it released the energy that it had. So you you wanna grab these two things and wanna lift it up. Um, you don't need to remove this thing, by the way, the one that I mentioned before. You don't need to remove the the actual gate. Uh, you can work around it, and it's a good idea to don't do it because as soon as you touch that that thing you are messing with the focal flange distance of your camera and you can make a mess pretty pretty quickly we have the camera now uh this part removed and there is gonna be something important here this is how it looks this is the the guts of the loop formers mechanism and now you can see they were using thread which is not exactly reliable it's not a bad idea it's a very uh, nice mechanism um, but it's not perfect it's not mm, mechanically as precise as solid parts would be so here's this thing that I was talking about the one that you push in and as you can see when I push that one so several things happen right inside and you can see this thing moving I mean it's uh, a camera from the 80s um, it came from came from Russia uh, not saying it's not good quality stuff 
it is really good quality stuff uh, it's a, re a very good camera uh, it was not intended to be a professional camera that's all and they say it in their in the manual okay so something to pay attention to uh, it depends on the cameras it varies from one camera to another one but sometimes you're gonna have a couple of washers here on the shaft on the bottom of the shaft uh, that thing is there to set the distance um, look inside the camera there are there's film pieces of film um, it, it is they are in there and um, I'm not sure I can see any oh there, there's one here so you gotta you want to pay attention to these things uh, because n in this case there's some grease here and the washer is staying there there are a couple of washers actually there you go there are two and you want to be careful with these things because you don't want to lose them especially not inside the camera where they they can damage the rest of the the main motor um, as I said before this camera is not working properly and at some point I'm going to this thing can it's free now so I'll check it out later I have some ideas of what the causes can be um, now that we're here it's a really good idea to replace this kind of stuff and I'm gonna make another video if you guys want uh, let me know where I'm going to be replacing all these light seals a lot of people complained about the camera having uh, light leaks coming through the footage counter which is this one here and you can see why it is a window literally so it allows uh, light to travel inside the, the camera and it um, flashes the film it is absolutely possible to have a camera I, I was reading the other day somebody was really writing uh, it's impossible to have a a Krasnogor that doesn't uh, have light leaks it is absolutely possible and it's not difficult at all you you have to replace this stuff this is stuff I'm gonna put pr uh, some pressure on this thing so you can see that's how bad it is that's how outdated it is um, it is supposed to bounce back it's foam but it is so old then when I press it down it doesn't go back to its position it's actually like a mess here's the the actual uh, mechanism of the footage this is a footage counter and you can see this thing how it is in terrible condition it's not doing its work its job anymore so you have to replace that uh, I may make another video on this it's a good idea to replace that one um, but that's for another video another thing that you have to remember this thing you have to put it back in the camera and I really if you want to watch my video and then I really recommend you yeah. <laughs> you watch uh, the other one that somebody posted like 10 years ago so what you want to do with this thing is uh, this is a very important part of the camera the camera won't work without this so as you can see there is grease on the bottom so you have to remember the position of this thing and then you have to put it back in the mechanism here and this is how it works probably it's not a good idea to do it now but since I'm talking about it uh, this part has to be in there and you have these things that are in charge of holding it in place and something very common is gonna be this thing that happened right here um, very easy to figure it out you just have to this metal part the springy thing it's there to keep the to push this thing forward and keep it in place and there are every single one has its own so what you want to do is with the part that it that was going uh that, that was facing the other thing you want to put it 
in its original position and then you wanna put it there so what you have to do is you have to do this kind of thing you have to align it like that and then when you put this part back in the, on the camera it's gonna stay there so you have to put this thing there and as you can see it's not going anywhere um, so it ends up uh, being there in its position <clears throat> obviously you cannot just put it there because this thing is not going to find its place on its own you have to do it manually topic in this video we have to remove this thing we have to remove those and what I'm going to do is uh, pretty much just destroy it just cut the, the strings and the strings and it's gonna and remove it now there's something important here you don't want to remove this spring and you don't want to remove this screw <clears throat> this is the screw that I mentioned is this part it's actually the spring that it's uh, moving this thing out of its place and when you push this one you can see that that thing which is the one that counts the footage was part of the mechanism so you're gonna lose some functionality when you remove this thing and this part is gonna be actually in the way most of the time so you have, have to manually uh, remove it when you are loading the film but it's better than getting your film scratched so let's do it Something you can do is, uh, that's up to you. Uh, I like removing these screws. They're not needed anymore. They are only, the reason for them to be there is because they are part of the loop formers mechanism. Um, you can seal the holes later with black silicone if you want, or if you want to leave the, the screws there, that's up to you. Um, these are heavy cameras and getting rid of some weight even when it, it is minimal it's not a bad idea the, but that's up to you uh, they're not gonna be light leaks or anything this part the silver one it's covering the entire thing Now, something you want to do is, as I said before, it's a great idea to replace this, the light, light uh, seals. Look at this thing. This thing is disgusting. And it's not, obviously, not doing its job anymore. Uh, I have seen people covering these things with yellow tape for example and some people has uh, want to be creative and they put some film in there I, I think they're trying to keep it classic or recycle stuff I don't know but that's a terrible idea that is a terrible idea this thing is translucent you want something that is gonna be solid just you can buy a brand new roll of these things at the dollar store for one dollar black electrical tape and it works beautifully this thing it's uh durable it, it is not translucent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cover the entire area here and as you guys saw i cleaned 
the area with uh, alcohol before putting the tape so it stays there longer and that's all pretty, pretty simple uh, pretty logic stuff So what I'm going to do it, you can see these are the areas that we have to cover. I'm going to do it on this side as well. It doesn't cost anything. And in order to for the tape to stay there longer, uh, I'm going to clean these areas with rubbing alcohol as well. Uh, so what you want to do first is remember these little washers, but pay attention. So what you want to do is you want to put those back in the shaft first. Again, repeating things, but important. You want to have that thing in there. You want it to be in the hole. You want it to be in the middle. So what you want to do is you have to insert this thing, the shaft in the hole. This is the one. And you want to be careful with that thing. And you want to be careful with this piece in general, because you don't want to scratch it. If you scratch the, the gate, or the gate area, the gate piece in general, you are risking having scratches on your film. So be careful. And this this thing, uh, this part can be frustrating because you are positioning this thing, and it's if it's not properly aligned, it's just gonna go down. It's like when you have something that it's not going straight. If it's it's not gonna go down. In this case, it's going uh, down pretty smooth. And what I have to do, what you have to do, is this thing, this part has a an edge here, and this one as well. So you want to do it like this. You want to angle this part at the same time that you're fighting that other thing, and put it down. And as you can see, not difficult at all, really. Uh, it went all the way down. You can see now that this part is underneath the silver one, which is this one right here. The gear that we that it's right here that we talked about uh, about that one. You want to put some pressure here. You want to rotate this thing so it falls in place. And you're gonna hear it falling in place, and it actually did. This is going pretty smoothly. Sometimes you have to remove the thing, that thing and then the, the gear is gonna be on the other end and then you have to put it back on the silver cap. As you can see, that's what you wanna do. You wanna mark it so you can, uh, when you're putting the camera back later, you can put it on the same position. And at that point, I just have to it is there. I just have to screw those back. One, two. So we removed, uh, as you guys remember, this thing. It was in there. Some people just leave it there. The reason for me to remove it is because if I don't remove it, there's no pressure on it anymore and it's gonna be rattling. So I'm going to use this thing, which is black silicon. And what I do is, And there it is, guys. Um, actually, I forgot about that, uh, but you can put a, a piece of electrical tape on the bottom of this thing. Uh, and you can double up with the black silicone on top. No loop formers. And you have to ca load the camera manually now, which is actually pretty simple. Um, 
there are tutorials on how to do it and i'm going to make a video later talking about how i test my cameras with black and white uh, film as i said before and then i process that film at home so i can test the camera in about two hours so i can see the results the actual image coming out of this camera using black and white black and white film if i do that video if you guys are interested in watching that uh i'm going to load the camera even when there are tutorials already there and i'm gonna do it uh blinded so you can see it is absolutely possible and it's not difficult and you are not risking um scratching your film with these little things thank you for watching guys i have a couple of uh, films shot on the krasnogorsky 3 but i'm gonna shoot more soon uh, i have some cameras that i converted myself to ultra 16 but there are a lot of things that you can do with a camera like this one you can create very decent if not close to professional work with these cameras if you know what you're doing uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe